The world is changing and so is media. What once was a broadcast dominated landscape is now getting more and more overrun with online content creation. Creators are finding new ways to connect with audiences every day. What people once relied on their televisions for, they're now finding somewhere else. Some might even call it the new television. For a while, YouTube was looked at as this place where people could just broadcast themselves. You could be watching a video that looked like this, and then if you got bored... Hey, ah! Videos that looked like this would fit in right alongside something like this. There was something for everybody, an idea that YouTube still prides itself on today. But it wasn't until recently that YouTube as a platform started to be taken seriously by traditional media. YouTube opened doors for other online platforms and rung in this new era of media consumption and creation and all of that, but there's still a ways to go until it's widely accepted in the same way that TV was and still is. So I talked to some people in an effort to get some insight on this idea. I wanted to get an understanding of the experience from a content creator's perspective, so I talked to Josh Chomik, a true YouTube veteran. Also known as the Computer Nerd Zero One, Josh joined the platform in 2007 and quickly gained a following doing parody songs and vlogs, two formats truly unique to the medium. Since then, he accumulated close to 400 million views and 1.3 million subscribers, only to then leave the platform some years later. So, how would you explain what you did to people? On YouTube, what I did, I hit record on my camera and I just filmed whatever I possibly could, especially early on. Like, I always had my parents' camera on me, so I would just go around with all my cousins, all my friends, and I never played sports growing up because I was just bad at them. So, I was always, like, biking around town, skateboarding, like, you know, 11, 12 years old, and just filming whatever I could find. Well, yeah, it's uh, 2011 now. Oh. And uh, we should definitely do something. Uzbekistan. To commemorate the celebration of life. Like fly? If I could fly, I would totally fly for you. 80-20. So uh, let's rap. Let's do it. Let's do a rap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's go. I picked up a quarter and I put it in my pants. At what point did you first realize that you could be successful on YouTube? I started on YouTube when it came out mm. and I didn't really understand what YouTube was. I just realized it was a place where I could throw my videos on for anyone in the world to watch mm. and that blew my mind as a 14 year old and eventually after just uploading so much they just became big out of nowhere it blew up and it never really hit me until I was successful that I was successful so like it happened out of nowhere and like in the moment that's when I realized I was like wow like mm. what's going on right now this is insane that was the craziest thing especially about YouTube then because you were kind of one of the people that's just like, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. <laughs> but you, it just was big. That's why like my parents were so confused. And mm -hmm. With a 14 year old in the house bringing in thousand dollar checks like from Google, they were yeah. so confused. They're like, what is like, what's this money? Why are we getting all this money out of nowhere? And are they from your videos? And my parents never understood my videos because they were so random and they didn't make any sense. And yeah. I was just having fun. I never had a game plan in mind. We were just feel like me and my friends were just always goofing around and I would just film that and mm. somehow it just got like big just thinking outside the box and mm. I just wanted to do something different and we had fun doing it. Before we continue with Josh, I want to introduce you to a group of the same sentiments as Josh did when he first started all those years ago. They also create online content simply because they have fun doing it. They are the undergrads. What? Dude, it's her ex-girlfriends. What are you guys doing here? Listen, we don't want any trouble. Do you miss us yet? No. Yeah, do you miss the way we used to cut a lot now? I don't. Do you miss the way I used to cover you in orange paint and make you jump around like a little baby carrot? No. No, I, I don't I know I don't miss that. So the three of us just started on YouTube and we, you know, it was fun, but we weren't really getting the results we uh, wanted. And we realized maybe it was because people didn't want to click the link in our Instagram to go to another website and watch the video. So then this year we decided to start making short comedy Instagram videos and posting them. And the results were so much better than our YouTube. And then we started posting the things that we're posting on Instagram onto TikTok. And then one of our videos got like over a million views and then we kept growing on TikTok. We went from zero to 
5,000, then it was 10,000, then it was 20,000, 30,000. Now we're at 60,000 followers on TikTok. Over 2,000 on Instagram. We have 200 subscribers on our YouTube and we're just growing. Why did you um, go towards the short form uh, style of videos? We started off on YouTube and we started uh, with like five, four to five minutes uh, long sketches on YouTube. But um, we found that the way to grow is to make content shorter and to grab people's attention right away. So we decided to transition to Instagram and to really just try to grab our audience and be like, hey, watch this. It's only a minute. It doesn't take that much time. Do you think there's a stigma around internet-based production like you guys do? I feel like people don't realize like the work that some, I'm not saying all, but some content creators on the internet, like our comedy sketches, like we actually put work into them. We don't just put a phone down and like film it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think people realize like that who don't do it. But, and I think there is a stigma when it comes to online content because of um, apps like TikTok. You know, I think it's, you know, a lot of people see people just doing this or renegading and dancing to get millions and thousands of views. And you're like, well, why that doesn't, but when you step back and you look at it, it's like, okay, well maybe they're actually putting, they're like seeing what people like. And they're, if you're gearing your videos to get views towards an audience, I mean, in a way you got to respect that, even though you don't maybe not like the content. I feel like you just have to be a creator to really understand how much work goes into it. Because like, if you don't know anything about it, you're just seeing a video. You're like, Oh, that's just a funny video. Whereas someone who like maybe is a television uh, major in college and they see it as like, oh, they made a funny video, but they must have written it out and had like a lot of pre-production before the actual production happened. Nobody knows more about committing to video creation than Josh, so I'll let him get into that. Um, I started going to school right after high school. I went to a community college, but I just wasn't like... I was so focused on making videos and having fun with the videos. School was the last thing on my mind. I mostly went for my parents. Um, but like a semester and I was like, why am I spending my money, wasting my money on this? Like, I'm not focused. I'm focused on the videos. I'm doing bad. I'm getting out of here. So like the day, like I stopped going to school, I dropped out. I was just like, it was the best day ever. Cause like I would just post weekly on YouTube. So like the moment I posted that one video, I was just stoked. I was like, okay, what am I going to post next? So what am I going to create now a whole like week to create a video? Yeah. Did YouTube, your experience on YouTube, did that help you once you got off the platform? Oh, definitely. Yeah. With YouTube, like. Number one, like I saved a lot of money, which like helped me pay through like when I went back to school, I got to like pay for school and also like where I'm living now and like everything I ever had to buy, like I had money because I saved and like in high school and I was making all the money, like I wasn't like stupid spending it. I was like investing my money, saving it like for the future and like mm -hmm. uh, that paying off now. Like, I'm so grateful I did all that. And also like with all the connections I made through YouTube, like networking is everything in this industry. And like I got to meet a lot of good people and that helped me like move on from there. So. Do you think that uh, corporations take people coming from YouTube seriously? Because I feel like you can come from mainstream media to YouTube and be successful, but mm -hmm. you can, it doesn't work the opposite way. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like mm -hmm. you take like Casey Neistat, for example, who's just like huge on YouTube. And like you see him working with a lot of like bigger brands and stuff. But like guys like that don't want to go on TV. Like yeah. a lot of these like bigger YouTubers, they see like YouTube is falling apart and everyone on TV is running to YouTube. So like a lot of these YouTubers don't want to go there. And I feel like all these like big corporations want them to, mm -hmm. but they see like everyone's on YouTube nowadays. So why even go there, yeah. you know, and be controlled when you have full creative freedom on YouTube. After getting in the mind of an online content creator, I wanted to see from the perspective of someone from a more traditional broadcast background. I'm Pat Fastuk and I've had a very long career at NBC News in uh, live television uh, news production and also entertainment reality show production in later years in digital. So I've kind of done both, you know, traditional broadcast, cable, and now digital programming. And I also own a production company called Fastcom Productions and our specialty is live sports. So we produce all the New York Red Bulls 2 games for ESPN. Cool. And I'm Steve Fastuk. I'm Senior Vice President of Operations for CNBC. I'm responsible for all of the production and operations at CNBC and I've been with NBC for 33 years and I've done just about every kind of production there is to, to be done. So as people who come from a traditionally you know, broadcast background, how do you think that compares to YouTube and online content creation? Well, I think it has an even wider reach. 
you know, I, I'm someone who really believes the lines are blurring um, between the two. And I think it's just becoming more and more about content and whether it's on traditional television, um, cable, on demand, online, on your phone, on your laptop. To me, it doesn't really matter. It's all about producing incredible content and getting it out there in all of the above platforms. This is where mastering the skills of creating good content are so important, right? The winners in the race for great jobs and great careers are going to be those who have mastered good content. And, and if you look at CNBC, we're, we're across all platforms now, and TV is one of them. And it's still the biggest money maker, but it, it won't be forever, and we know that. So, so we've, we've built out massive amounts of, of uh, platform distribution around the traditional TV product. For a lot of people in younger generations, uh, they're coming home and they go to YouTube for entertainment and content uh, in a similar way that older generations have you know, come home, turn on the TV, and that's how they consume content. How has that generational shift affected TV? Traditional TV had boundaries, right? It had limits. There was 24 hours a day, one channel. Uh, now there's no limit. There's no limit to inventory. So as much as you can produce can be seen. So there is no more, no more linear limits. That's the biggest thing. Right. And it's also about producing, to me, um, long form, short form, and mini versions of something. So you can produce, you can have a show, a more traditional show, that you're monetizing more in, in the network arena because it's bringing in more advertising dollars. You can take that and make smaller versions or sidebar programs for the, strictly for the YouTube or online, whatever your you know, online platform is. So to me, it's really about even producing more content and um, expanding what you do to however someone wants to consume it. Seeing where traditional broadcasting is going, I wanted to hear from someone who has a foot in both doors. Hi, my name is Kehlani Anastasi. I'm a senior, a graduating senior at Montclair State studying television production and digital media. Um, I got into YouTube by uh, getting my own DSLR when I was younger and I made some makeup videos. Then I stopped for a little and then I started up again a little over a year ago and have seen more success with it now. So you got like, where are you at now? Like 30K? Yeah, just, under, just underneath. So you got majority of that like in the past year? Um, I got 15,000 since like July. That's crazy. When I think of it like that, I'm like, I don't like, this isn't going anywhere. And then I think about that and I'm like, okay, that's at least something get on me. Why do you think it grew that quickly? Um, I would attribute it to a viral video I made um, that went viral last July and I had no idea it was going to go viral. And then I just kind of stuck to that whole health and fitness niche and just started making a bunch of videos about that and people liked it. So clearly, you know, a bit about, um, like traditional broadcasting as well. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, you're pretty adept with the YouTube space. Uh, if you compare the two, um, what do you think like the major differences are? I mean, as opposed to broadcasts and live production, things I do in class, um, I like it, but I'm not as interested in it as I am digital media, YouTube. Do you see yourself um, like using YouTube the same way that you've been using it, like say a couple of years from now, or I get, where do you see yourself going? I mean, if I have the financial means, I would love to do YouTube full time. I think that's a dream job, honestly, um, because I don't necessarily want to know what I want to do in my field of TV production and digital media with my degree. Um, I'm much more interested in the health fitness aspect of it all. And I think I can use like all of that more so with YouTube rather than broadcasting. Do you think that the two will sort of merge eventually or if you have any insight what do you think will happen i feel like eventually 
traditional TV will merge with YouTube because um, we are the newer generation that's going into it. And the more, you know, people that get jobs from our generation are gonna push YouTube on older generations. And then they're gonna eventually realize that this is better because this is a better way for people to absorb media and news um, and stuff like that. So I think eventually they will merge. With this new wave of media comes a whole new set of possibilities for content creators in the future. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like I would not like to have a desk job and I'm going to work as hard as I can to make that not a possibility for me to be working at a desk job. I want to be doing this for the rest of my life, so I'm going to put like all my time into it. I love being creative and I love putting my ideas out there, but getting the response, whether it's good or bad, it's I love that people are actually watching our content and wanting to see our content. And I think like the people who watch and the people who support really motivate me to, you know, sit down and write a sketch. The audience that watches our videos I just love seeing their reactions and it brings me joy and I also, like James said, really enjoy doing this and want to do this the rest of my life. But for some, their creativity and drive leads them elsewhere, away from the online space that everyone is so familiar with today. Which brings us back one more time to Josh. What would you say is the one thing that led to you like gradually distancing yourself um, from YouTube? It just happened naturally. Like I think with algorithms on YouTube changing, like uh, all of a sudden like my parodies stopped coming off a of search and like the way people found my videos, it kind of started changing with like bigger like corporations coming through and stuff. So the views started going down. I tried changing like my style of videos and as I grow I grew up older, like the randomness kind of like phased off a little bit more. Mm. It was harder to like be that random guy. I tried doing vlogs more, changing up the style and I loved doing all those videos, but like they didn't pick up like the old videos did so it, like it kind of started phasing after like probably like 2015 started slowing down a bit and then but I was like always content with it I was like I've been here for like almost 10 years now cool I'm ready for whatever's next like that yeah. was an awesome like chapter I learned a lot I saved a ton um and this is just gonna like launch me into whatever's next. So mm -hmm. I always saw it as like, okay, it is what it is. And I'm just gonna figure it out from here. There's still a ways to go until online content becomes as prominent as traditional media. But when it does, it will be the new TV.